Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the GSL Code A Round of 32 Sweden Day. Sweden Day, man. Sweden Day today. Sweden versus Korea. This time it's going to be Thorzane versus Yu-Gi-Oh. That's right, man. And uh, it's going to be good stuff. Yu-Gi-Oh is a guy who's played in the GSL a lot, actually. Yeah, he's actually, um, he and Czech are the two kind of more experienced players playing today uh, from Korea. Lucky, yeah. not too much experience. Sniper, yeah, not yet. even less. But, um, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh has a lot of experience, though. I remember he was one of the guys that, like, uh, even before he was in Code A, you'd be like, oh, who did this good player beat, like, in the finals of his Code A bracket, uh, Code B bracket to get in? Oh, it was, like, Yu-Gi-Oh. He'd yeah. always get to, like, the final of his, finals he's really of his good. bracket. So he's actually pretty good. Um, Very true. So we're going to see what happens there. But some trivia about Yu-Gi-Oh. He actually did not play the card game. I asked him. He didn't play. Wow. I was disappointed. He just picked three random syllables and was like... Well, he did watch the TV show. Oh, okay. But he didn't play the card game. you got to play the, <coughs> play the game, man. I thought it was a cartoon first. I don't think... I don't actually know. That's oh. actually... It's, it's made by Konami. That's all I know. I, was, I thought it was trolling I watched, you. and then I played the card game, and then I won money in tournaments. That's how, that's wow. how I did Yu-Gi-Oh, man. Wow, all right, about you man. Guys. <laughs> I, just, I just played the Star Trek customizable card game personally. I had the so, I had the uh, Star Wars card game that was really good, but I couldn't figure out like, the rules exactly. I got it when I was like five years old, and then, and then when I was like ten, I like, tried to get my parents like we need to sit down and play this game, and they're like, "Well, this is really complicated, Wolf." I'm like, "Well, I don't know. I, I kind of want to play it, but I never got to, and now I don't know where it is. Uh, it's probably worth a lot of money now." I found my old Magic cards the other day, actually. I never played Magic. But, it um, seemed really hard. But uh, the, like, like I had some of the like original stuff too, like not their first printing or whatever. I'm like, man, these must be worth so much money. This is <laughs> this stuff is like 15 years old. I've had forever. This must be. I asked a friend of mine who's like competitive in Magic, goes to tournaments around the world and stuff, and he's like, actually, most of that stuff is worth like pennies. I'm like, <laughs> oh. So anyway, but well, um, that's <laughs> that's beside the point. Because we're going to have a TVZ here coming up <laughs> in just a minute after we finish getting sidetracked. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. If you wanted to talk more no, about you cool. guys, We just, we just cool. had to talk a little bit about our card games were, yeah. you know, when we were younger. I don't say our childhood because I played Yu-Gi-Oh! when I was what like What was the 14. biggest uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament that you won? I don't remember what it was called, but it was at like a GameStop or uh, Play and Trade or something like that. There he is, in fact. Slayer's Yu-Gi-Oh! A Zerg player. GSL July Code A round of 16. He uh, got to the round of 16. Yu-Gi-Oh is one of these guys, like I said, he's really good, but he's actually, for a couple seasons now, he's been one of those um, guys that, like, wins his first match and then loses in the round of 16 and comes yeah. back the next se season and wins his first match and loses in the round of 16. Yeah, exactly. So he hasn't really proven himself as a truly strong player just yet. Um, lost to Happy, actually, a Terran player last who's, season. Yeah, he's now in Code S. Who's Very now in Code good S. Terran player. Fortunately, he had to run into him. Yep. <laughs> So, remember, this is a very important match for the Korean players as well as the foreigners because this is the round of 32 still. If they lose, they're back into Code B. Yep. So Jinro, for example, losing last game, he's not even in the GSL anymore. We didn't really no. talk about that, but he's out. And he's there, out of there, man. There is Thorzane. The Korean commentators were trying to figure out how to pronounce his name beforehand. They're like asking me. They're like, they're like, is it Thorzane? I'm like, I'm with Thorzane. I had to teach him to like. Put his tongue between his teeth to make the th sound. It's difficult. I'm not. I'm not making fun of him, by the way. I'm just saying, like the the Korean language doesn't have some sounds that English does, so they just don't know. They're not used to making it. So anyway, there's Thorzane, MLG Columbus. He got a seed to Code A from placing high enough in MLG Columbus uh, to be here. In fact, that's how most of the guys got into this from MLG. Of course, Jinro coming down from Code S, but uh, Thorzane and Naniwa both. Placed in MLG, and that's how they're here. And Sase actually won a best of Sweden tournament. Yes. He was the first person to beat Naniwa in like 36 matches in the finals of the Rakaka tournament and got here of that. So, anyway, but Thorzane um, has a really strong chance here, man. He is one of the strongest players in the world outside of Korea, one of the strongest Terrans. Uh, obviously, winning, you know, TSL over some really high. That High was level, a um, very impressive prestigious win. Seriously, lift. man. So if anyone has a chance against some of the Koreans, you know, I think Thorzane is one of them. And unfortunately, 
you know, his TVZ is not his best, so he's kind of got a, a, a not as good of an opponent as he could hope for, but uh, he still has it in him, I think. We're going to find out here pretty soon. The first map is going to be Terminus Re. Both players getting ready. And here we go. Let's get into the game in just a moment. Actually, yeah. let's take it a shot of us first. So hey, we guys. Can show how excited we are. Like, like pretend to be probes. I'm actually really excited. Here we go. Sometimes we go to transition and I just like shake my head because I'm like, what was I saying there? <laughs> I'm like, anyway, here is our Zerg player representing Korea, representing the team Slayers. Slayer Sella was not even sure if he was going to win today. Slayers Yu-Gi-Oh! You guys don't get the Street Fighter voice for him, I guess. <laughs> and the here Street is Fighter his guy. opponent, hailing from the mystical land of Sweden, spawning as a blue Terran player. Master Jin. Or Zane. See, the Street Fighter Marcus guy doesn't play Yu-Gi-Oh, man. Eklo, I think? Yeah, Eklo. Something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh's Korean name is Jung Seong Il. In case anyone's curious. Yeah. It's not Yu-Gi. No, it's not. But Yu-Gi-Oh is not Korean, actually. <laughs> um, anyway, and Yu-Gi-Oh, actually, even though he doesn't have a ton of televised matches, his versus Terran is actually his best matchup. 57% win rate in that, although he hasn't really beaten anyone too strong. So, not sure how much that says. You know, like he beat August in Code a a couple seasons ago. Yeah. August uh, is a pretty good player. He's pretty good. He's not really good. We used to be in that clan of old Warcraft 3 players called Wera. Oh, that, yeah. That's how he like, kind of got his skills up. The clan, of course, no longer exists. Now, kind of a newly formed team called Pros that <coughs> assembled from oh. those old players and a lot of those guys still around like Astrea where you guys may have remember hearing him he's still pretty good he's out there we might see him again he always tries yeah. to qualify it's interesting how a lot of these guys that are mildly successful in, in uh, StarCraft 2 are from something like that like Lucky actually was a, a, a actually rather horrible Brood War player he actually was a Brood War player One, I actually looked up the stats earlier one of his couple wins. Oh wait, maybe I'm thinking of a sniper. Actually, I should double check that. But uh, I think it was lucky. One of his couple wins ever. He was like two and fifteen in his Brood War career. One of his wins, MC. Yeah. When MC played Brood War. And MC is actually considered to be one of those worst Brood yeah, War. Yeah, he was really bad in Brood they War. They called him the Suicide Protoss because he was uh, he lost so much. <laughs> Anyway, so we got Thorzane walling off, actually at the top of his ramp, um, which is interesting. I guess he's afraid of shenanigans, afraid of some early pressure. Well, he maybe just wants to hide what's going on. Yeah, he wants to hide that he's going for a one barracks of spam. That's why he made that second depot faster, and that's why he did the little shenanigan with the drone. He sent, like, pulled the SCV out the scout. Didn't want the SCV to get into his base. Yeah. And when you do the build like this, you make your second depot earlier for that reason. You see that in TVP as well. It's very important to not let the Zerg player know what you're doing because now you guys think about all the possibilities. Could be reactor Hellions, could be a two racks, could be a hidden barracks somewhere. It could be could two be port Banshee. Two port Banshee. Could be cloak Banshee. Who knows? Could be one base battle cruiser rush. Could be four Marines coming out to pressure and a one racks expand. I think that's what it is going to be. It could be planetary fortress drop rush. <laughs> In case you didn't notice, I'm just making up silly stuff now. Well, um, I mean, it's been done. It has been done. I don't think it's been done in the GSL. No, it has not been done in a prestigious tournament, but it has been done. But it has been done. <laughs> Actually, uh, Diggity and Psionic Reaver, back in the beta, I think, they did a, a 2v2 game where they did a double planetary fortress rush. Did it work? It worked, man. It worked. It was so epic. I think Diggity put it as like his thousandth his thousandth video on YouTube or whatever <laughs> to like celebrate. He he did like the most epic video ever. Well, what's interesting about the the planetary fortress rush back in the beta, people didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to react oh. and would stop it. Nice, guess that's early. Nice. Um, but now, I mean, it's very obvious. Like the, for those of you guys who are out there, if you ever experienced planetary fortress rush or you're a newer player and you struggle with this, the best way to stop planetary fortress rush is to put, put an SCV underneath. under it. He yeah. can't ever land it. Oh, what happens then? Oh no, his Marines get trapped outside. He does at least not lift good. the depots though. So the Zerglings will not get in, but he does lose a few Marines that he did not want to lose early on. He was kind of keeping those Marines on the ramp so they could block scouts, but it, you know, ended exactly. up a bad thing for him. Yeah, he didn't expect Yugo to make that many Zerglings. Now the third, third command center, third hatcher going down, and a macro hatchery. So Yu Gi Oh! 
four hatcheries. It's gonna be coming out soon. Wow. Does oh. lose this Overlord though. Oh! No, 14. I spoke too soon. Two more volleys would have done it, man. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, there's that macro hatch. Now, does he... He's got... Can you check that? What's going on? He's got two factories, right? Yeah. And is he researching anything right now? No, he hasn't gotten blue flame yet. Okay. So he's just got two factories. I'm, he's making Hellions, but he's not researching. That's kind of odd. Yeah, this is a little bit odd. Now, I wonder if it's a mistake. I don't think it's a mistake. He's researching okay, siege, siege mode. Tech now. Yeah, okay. so he wanted to get siege mode out. He wanted to kind of take... I think he wants to take a fast third do it and secure that with siege tanks. Didn't want to commit to that blue flame yet. He's not making that many Hellions. Just being very aggressive for once he has. Well, he's actually not being as aggressive as he could be. Now he's moving out with them. I knew he was going to do it. I knew he had it in his mind. I thought it was just—it was interesting that he got two factories that he was researching stim and getting hellions. Yeah, it was anyway, a little bit weird. It, maybe it'll all come together. I feel like maybe this is some kind of a build that, like, has a point where it comes together at like some kind of a two-base timing or something like that. Uh, well, because I mean, you don't need the blue flame for hellions to be good against zerglings. It's starting to come together now as you see these three barracks oh, being nice. added here. Nice little wall off at the front. He's gonna have four barracks and two factories after that. That'll be a nice, uh, yeah. nice production he's set for start... making two two tanks and a bunch of marines at the same time. Exactly, and he's gonna start combat shields as soon as that stim finishes. Yeah. <clears throat> so he can start getting a lot of marines out. So he's basically going marine tank with a few hellions to start with. Uh oh. Uh -oh. It looks so weird to see red flames coming out of hellions now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, dude. Did you, did you like look at that and see what like think the same as me? I was like, whoa, are those red? <laughs> I like saw that. I was like, oh my god. Oh man, that's there's funny. red flames coming out of those hellions. <laughs> you just don't see that every day, man. They should just like have the default be blue, and you have to do like a downgrade to get red. Well, they only recently changed the icon. That's right. That was your. That was your doing. That's what I was told. I heard, I heard Blizzard like heard me complaining about it, and they actually changed it because of me. Like I'm the reason why it was really? changed. Yeah. Who told you that? You did, man. I, I was just just joking. Oh, you were joking? Yeah, I didn't like talk. I don't know. To you were always about talking it. about talking to Blizzard. I'm like, well, I don't know. Moltrap told me Blizzard did it <laughs> because of me. I was like, no, no. I had just drawn that connection from the fact that like, you were complaining about the oh, icon, okay. and then like three weeks later, the patch changed it or whatever. Oh, okay. I thought you were actually serious. I don't know. Like finding out this truth here at the GSL like on air. <laughs> The Blizzard, by the way, shout out to the guys at Blizzard. Yeah. Every one of them that I talked to was just, they were just a bunch of really cool guys. I talked really to some of those guys earth. here, they're great. And like, they like watch GSL and they're like totally down to earth and um, fun guys to hang out with. Anyway, the Zerglings are going to break down those rocks. Thorazain doesn't have really much of a defense at the southern part of his base for these Zerglings, but it looks like he wants to move out. He needs to take care of those Zerglings before he does. I think he's gonna, He's gonna. he's got combat shields now. He hasn't made a command center. I think he wants to hit a timing attack. Yeah. But I don't know if he's he's missing his timing window. I think he's... He, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to fully understand what Thorazine is doing because he's doing a style that's kind of older and it's not something we, we really see that much in the GSL anymore. Um, and he hasn't made a third command center. He's adding more barracks, and so he's definitely looking to do some sort of timing attack. He's going to have to do it freaking soon, man, yeah. because Yu-Gi-Oh! has four bases. He's got four bases. He's got a Spire on the way. He's making a ton of Banelings. Or, uh, certainly he's going to be making Banelings soon. His Baneling speed's halfway done. Yeah, and He's Thorzain, already got plus one. It looks like Thorzane's posturing to take the third outside of his main, which is... But it's, it's possible, you know, he's, he's just moving forward very slowly, he's got an armory on the way here. I guess he's going to make some Thors leave those at home to deal with Mulus counterattacks. Yeah. But he's just doing this so slowly, I think he's actually just going to push towards Yu-Gi-Oh's main he's like this. He's just going to do like an actual slow push, yeah. instead of like, most turns are like, I'm going to slow push and they like A-move their army all the way across the map and then like, slow push from right outside. Which is fine if the Zerg doesn't attack you, obviously, but... Uh, sometimes it's risky. Anyway, he's coming up on the creep though, so... Yeah, now Yu-Gi-Oh's gonna know what's going on. Yu-Gi-Oh being very patient about this, and I like this move by Thorzane. It's very unusual, it's not the style that you see in Korea. Yeah. Definitely bringing his own style in here. Look at how many Zerlings that is though. That's why he has to be so slow, because if these tanks ever get caught on siege, bad things will happen. Now behind this, Thorzine is finally taking his third base. Those two barracks that he made in his main have kicked in, so he's got a lot of extra production yeah. here. And it looks like he might just be, you know, he's... I'm so used to, like like you said, like he's got a different style. The Korean style would be like doing drops and like all that kind of stuff. Thorzine's like, I'm just going to slowly push out here 
and just be really methodical about it. I'm not going to risk losing a bunch of Marines to a drop. Well, he's killing a ton of creep tumors out in the middle of the map right now as well. With every scan, he gets like six of them. Oh, there's the Mutalus flying around. A few kind of getting caught in the middle of the map, actually, by some Marines who are still picking off creep tumors. And they are going to dispatch those few Marines and maybe the Medivac. Yes, he does lose that Medivac. And maybe a maybe tank, a tank. actually. It might be too spread out here, actually. Yeah, Marines ooh, coming forces in. a stim. Here's There's the thing. so many Banelings being morphed right Th now. Thorzane is going really light on the Medivacs. He's only made a couple. So every time he stims a group of units like that, it's actually a lot worse than it would be normally. Yeah, and Yu-Gi-Oh! is preparing for this. He's actually got units set up in three different locations. He's got them over on the top left. He's sending some down around the bottom right. He's snoring some... some uh, watch out, Yu-Gi-Oh! running into debris. He's got to be very careful about that. Thorzin and Yu-Gi-Oh! almost dead even on supply. Um, you get, now here's the thing, Thorzane, because of the way he's doing this, he could take a fourth really easily if he wants to. So that's kind of good the way that this is working. Right now it's three bases to four, so he's not terribly far behind because he has those mules. Oops, he's number in there. Trying to hold those watchtowers as he pushes. But Smart. I like this. He is in the company of main. He's just abusing the fact that Thorzane is so spread out. He's, all of his units are out of his base. Despite the fact that Thorzane... Hold that thought. Zerling's running into the chief tank fire. Nice move by oh Thorzane no. trying to bait those, oh. but losing a medevac. Medevac gets caught, and here's the thing is, the way Thorzane's set up, he's like controlling the towers and he's controlling the middle, but it means that these Mulisks have a whole big open area between his main and his forces that they can like kind of dance around in and do things like just pick off that medevac. Oh, Thors are out. And he's got plus one on these Thors, of course, with tanks as well, so that makes every shot that much more potent. Thors ain't doing a great job with these little squads. Even though he may lose some of the Marines, it's important to kill those Creep Tumors. He's actually sitting right, right on top of the Creep Tumor that he hasn't gotten yet. Um, he'll probably realize that soon, though. Thors are out, though, so it's going to make so like a, those Marines. Actually, hold that on. Some Marines getting caught off guard here by some Zerglings. It's like a mini battle over the Watchtower, and Thorzane can hold it with just a few Marines because every time the Zerglings come down, the tanks the just tank destroy yeah, everything. Exactly. So it's really cool how he's controlled that. And this is really good by Thorzane. He's picking off this side hatchery, now using the fact that uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is a little spread out to his advantage, but the Mutas are fast enough to get over there. Lost a decent amount of Mutas though in that fight. That was a really good engagement for Thorzane, killing all the drones there. Yeah. 64 SCV is the 71 drones at this point. Well, I hold that thought that was 16 drones in production, so now it's at 87. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 22 Banelings being morphed. And Thorzane, I like this style. Yu-Gi-Oh! can't really abuse him because he's got the watchtowers. You can see whenever the Mutas run around. Like, for example, these Mutas that are trying to sneak around have been spotted. The Marines are already reacting. Plus two on those Mutas on the way. I was going to say he needs to get that pretty soon so he can do more with these Mutas. Yep. He does. He is kind of low on his green count though, so we might be able, have to be a little bit worried. These Marines engaging the Mutas, and whoa, look at that. Mutas forced back with the reinforcements coming in, and there was like a few Marines that barely had any health left, so bad engagement again for Yu-Gi-Oh! Losing another Mutalisk. He's down to about 10 Mutalisks at this point. Six more in production. And He's got to be very careful how he balances his unit production right now. Plus three weapons on the way for Thorzane, plus one armor. This is for his infantry, of course. He hasn't started plus two at his armory wow. just yet. What's the uh, armor for uh, Yu-Gi-Oh's crown units? He's got plus one carapace. Wow. And, so, uh, yeah. And he's not researching carapace right now, so plus three weapons against plus one Zerglings is just going to own face. Own face. And own everything else about the Zerglings. Here comes those mutas trying to come in here. He's built up a few more. He's going to be able to do some damage because all of Thorzane's forces are out in front. I'm surprised he didn't do this before, actually. Yeah, he just wasn't doing this as much as he should have been earlier. And uh, Thorzane really needs like a Thor back in his main right now to stop this. Hold that on the front, in the front of the base. An attack going in. And it just died. A um, bunch of Marines went down there. Yeah, it was about 12 Marines in the medevac that died there. So Yu-Gi-Oh! kind of... Uh, Getting a couple victories there, taking out some depots, taking out a lot of Marines in the front. 
Although Thorzane is almost max, so it's really not that big of a deal for him to lose that action. Uh oh, drones transferring into death. Oh no. As Muta's fly into death as well. Yep. Two bad things happening at once for Yu Gi Oh! <laughs> Yu Gi Oh! kind of falling apart a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Thorzane finally started to be more harassment oriented because he's got such a good position in the middle of the map. Yeah. He and he's need maxed, to focus so on that. And, uh oh! Oh no. This hatchery over here on the right side could and go down. 47 hit points left. Whoa. And my computer lagged like crazy there that for was, a second. That was nuts. He needs to go finish that off, man. He does. And charging in the front as well. Take out some more drones. I don't know why Yu-Gi-Oh keeps... I don't know if he's transferring them or if he's like trying to get rid of them. And here comes a bunch of Banelys. He's going to try and break out. There's a ton of tanks and Thor's here, though. A bunch of Marines in the back. Thor's defense is just so multi-tiered. He's going to kill the front line, but he's never going to break this uh, this defense by Thorzane right now. He's Actually, maybe with, with those investors. But, I mean... Yeah, just not enough. It's not enough. There's a planetary here. I mean, he did a lot of damage, though. He traded armies pretty efficiently. That's true. Uh, that, that actually went better for him than I thought. And, and he oh. was able to drop three Marines and kill the hatchery, but those drones... Oh my God. Those drones are like, that was my hatchery! <laughs> Get out of here! <laughs> we don't serve like, your Run! kind here. Medivac gets them out of there. Usually it's drones running away from Marines, not the other way around. Yeah. Uh, oh, and there's part of why... That's interesting. There's part of why Thorzane lost so much there. A lot of his Marines were in his main defending the Mutas, so they weren't very much more taking that attack. Yu-Gi-Oh! keeps donating Zerglings at that Zelnaga Death Trap. That's, <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it, the Zelnaga Death Trap there. Death he needs tower. to be very careful with uh, how he controls those units there. And Thorzane's finally going to bring those, well not finally, but he's going to bring those Marines back out of his main. Again, it's going to leave his main a little bit less defended, but... But he's killed so many Mutas, there's only five left. Yeah, so it's a, exactly. it's a smart time to move exactly. them out. He can hold out with turrets with that, so that's fine. And Thorzane taking a fifth. He's going to planetary that up. Yeah, he's in a really good spot. And now all he needs to do is slowly push his tanks forward again. Yeah. Make sure he doesn't lose any crazy battles. He's got plus two vehicle weapons on the way finally. He's got plus two armor on the way. Adding more Thors, adding additional factories and barracks. Thorzane looking really strong here. Yu-Gi-Oh! in a tough spot. He's making four investors. He's trying to get Hive Tech as he remakes hatcheries around the, the base, uh, around the base on the edge of the map. But uh, uh -oh. he's in a bad way right now. Burrowed investors creeping like their sharks, way. Man. They, they are like sharks, man. This is gonna be. He's well. He actually doesn't have that that many infested turns there or anything. I saw a game yesterday where what was that? Idra? Or who, I don't remember who. It was Idra versus someone. We're watching at the Gom House. Someone with like eight burrowed infestors and cast like twenty infested marines. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Took out a I saw really that. Quick. Yeah. He's just gonna do some harassment though. Force those SCVs back a little bit. Good move. Catching some Marines here at the Watchtower. This is the Zelnaga Death Trap. This is the Planetary Death Trap, Zelnaga Watchtower. It's next to a Planetary. <laughs> I think it was Idra vs. Cats. Yeah, it was. That's what it was. Yeah, someone showed us a replay and we watched that. It was a ZVZ. Yes, indeed. Um, so, wow. So, Thorazine actually is in really good shape right now. He's, yeah, he's, almost, he's maxed. He's got a big bank. He's got five bases. Yu-Gi-Oh! is at 150 supplies. He's going to lose this hatchery on the right side again. And... Um, well, yep. And in fact, these Zerglings aren't even really going to clean this up very easily. Only when the Broodlings came out. And Infested Terrans trying to do what they can there at the Planetary. That didn't quite work out. Yu-Gi-Oh! is in such bad shape. He's got 3,000 gas in the, in the bank, but he doesn't have a lot of minerals. And that's because Thorazane just keeps killing his mineral mining bases. Yeah. He, he It's kind of interesting. He's, he's like... Oh, I'm gonna push in your main, I'm gonna push in your main, I'm gonna push in your main! Actually, I'm gonna stop just short of your main and kill all your side bases instead. Yeah. And now he is, he's done that enough, though, that he is starting to get very yeah, close to Yu-Gi-Oh's main. He's at the edge of the main. And yeah. again, he's just got, like, layers of tanks and marines and tanks and marines just going back with Thors mixed in. Uh, it's just gonna be so hard for him to uh, actually get back there. There is a greater spire morphing that Thorzy does Neural not Parasite. know about. And those two things are what he needs, but it may be too little too late, given that he's down 50 supply, and there's going to be Marines running into his third base and into his tech buildings before he can really get good neurals or get Broodlords out. What tech buildings are in that third? At the third base? Well, there's no there's no tech buildings at the oh, third, but, but I think he gets in the natural. He's going he's gonna to run over there and draw the force over there and probably drop the main and kill tech structures. And He's I, actually pushing forward in the main here. Yu-Gi-Oh! 
There is, he's starting he, to drop. He doesn't have his uh, Neural yet. He doesn't have Greater Spire yet. So this is kind of like with Jinro, where he got the tech just a little bit too early for Jinro to deal with. At this point, yu gi -Oh is going to get a little bit too late. Dropping the side base again. Yu-Gi-Oh! is just not able to mine with all this harassment. Nice fungal on those Marines, but the tanks are shelling units in his main. His bailing nest is going to go down. And is he going to lose his hatchery? Uh, infested Terrans, Zerglings say no. The hatchery stays alive with 163 hit points left. But he actually kills a macro hatch in the main anyway. Yeah, and these infested Terrans are not very energy efficient. <laughs> Wow. Trying their best to hold off here. And oh, oh, Marine barely takes out that Fester. Queen gets it. But uh, Thorazine is just everywhere, man. Yeah, I think he's this got game's units end pretty everywhere soon. on the map. He's got them all over Yu Gi Oh's main base. Yu Gi Oh's desperately trying to fight things off, but it's just like there's nothing you do. Oh, he's going to. Oh, that was that was painful to watch. That was a lot of Marines dying to that one fungal. But. Um, Broodlords are out. There we go, finally. And that's what Yu-Gi-Oh! has been waiting for and hoping for. But look at this. Four Vikings, Vikings already prepared. Nice. The investors have already used up all of their energy or have been killed. Yeah. And these Broodlords are going to have to retreat now. The only thing standing in the, in the way of the Vikings is like one lonely queen. If he'd gotten all that tech a little bit earlier, he would have had the investors to stop the Vikings from killing his Broodlords. If he had the Broodlords earlier, he wouldn't have lost all of his mains. Exactly. But it just came out too late, and I think even though he's kind of fending this off, I think Thorzane is just in too commanding of a lead right now. He's getting up like a 7th yeah, base, does. I think. And these Broodlords are moving very slowly. 6th base. He's going to have to go and try to target down these tanks. Thorzane can move back, regroup, get more Vikings out. And he's in a pretty good spot. The problem is those Broodlords are never going to help defend the bases on the right side of the map that Yu-Gi-Oh needs. And Thorzane can just go harass those whenever he wants. Yeah, and even though it looks like on the minimap he's got a lot of bases, he's only mining at like one of them. Uh, no, I'm sorry, two of them. He's mining at two of them, and he does not have that many drones anyway, so he's just kind of... Yeah, well, actually, he's got he's got a good amount of drones with those two. But, point being, he doesn't have much money. Oh, man, these investors are kind of running out. you got to be very careful with those investors. The Broodlords are going to start sieging up, sounds weird to say, sieging up on siege tanks. That's pretty much what they're doing here. The Vikings, though, are prepared, and they're starting to do some serious damage. Losing this refinery, not too impactful. Thorzane splitting his Vikings, and uh, Neural parasiting a Viking, that's interesting. <laughs> um, well, whatever works, I mean, I guess. There he goes, bungling now, but the last Broodlord falls. Now these investors are going to be taken out. Uh, I don't think Yugo is going to be in this game much longer. No, Ghost man. Academy goes down. He's going to use that not only for EMPing investors but also for snipe. And it's it's interesting actually. It seems like a very late Ghost Academy to be honest with all these investors yeah. that have been out. But um, oh, is this hatchery going to go down? Infested Terran versus regular Terran. Hatchery that guy at 150. is cheating, man. He's oh. got he's got Viking support. He's got medevac support. So the Zerg cheats and brings out the Zerglings. Oh, and that Viking looks like got killed by Zerglings, but. Yeah, now Thorzin is even sieging those right side bases, and look at it. Yeah, that, that yeah, that hatchery's not, not bottom right. Well. Bottom right hatchery's about to go down. Drones transferring through tank fire. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh's all but dead. Thorzin has got the entire. Much dead. He's got entire control of the map. Yeah. Every time so, Yu-Gi-Oh tries to move around, he's walking into siege tanks. Yeah. He's like walking through a minefield, actually. This is really interesting, though. I mean, it's interesting to see. A different style come in here, and what do you think? I mean, was, was it? You it's, think that like Yu-Gi-Oh just didn't know how to deal with it? Well, that may be or? it, but it was just so patient by Thor's, and it was so well executed. Yeah, it was. He just never got ahead of himself. He was always so patient. He always cleared out the creep, and that's true. I mean, yeah, it was it very was, unusual, it, but very good. No, you're right. It was super patient, like you know, like we said. the Korean uh, Terrans will just do all kinds of drops and stuff, trying to be everywhere at once, and harass early on. Thorazane's like, nope, I'm just going to expand. And then later he did do all that stuff. Yeah, later, later once he was maxed. Once the Mutas were gone as well. Once he knew the Mutas were going to be gone, that's when oh, he really nice. did. Nice Viking splitting here. Splitting his Vikings, beautiful. And there's not even enough energy on those investors. They're trying to drop best of Terrans to deal with the Vikings. And look at this, and the Ghost. Ghost, knocking Ghost out makes pretty quick of work of that. Yeah. Every single Zerg unit is biological, so ghosts can snipe Broodlords, Festers, Zerglings if they wanted to, Overseers, Overlords. 
That's right. Broodlings oh, on the no, ground. Oh no, the planetary might go down. He needs to repair it. Oh, oh no. Oops. He just wasn't paying attention there. It doesn't actually matter at this point, though. Thorzane no, is almost double Yu-Gi-Oh's supply. He is more than double. He's got three times the income that Yu-Gi-Oh has. He's and he's sieging up his main. And he's sieging up his main. Yep. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh is putting up a very valiant, desperate defense. It's almost like Thor's is being too patient at this point with his siege push forward. All he has to do is drop that right side base and Yu-Gi-Oh isn't mining. Exactly. I mean, he's long distance mining anywhere else. And look at that sniping going off. Look at how many ghosts that is. Oh, oh, sniping. Oh, he, nice. Scans to spot them. Snipes. Bungle goes down on the ghosts, but they still have enough health to snipe that. Snipe everything, basically. Look at that mass ghost. <laughs> Thorzane is just mocking Yu-Gi-Oh at this point almost. Yeah, that's pretty silly. He's like, hey, I can do whatever I want. Let's have some fun with ghosts. Well, ghosts are actually appropriate to make in this case, but usually not that many. But it's just, it's just like a, t a sign of like, well, he has so many ghosts that the game yeah. is pretty much over. And uh, you know, he's, probably, he's getting into the main Yugi doesn't have any answer for this. His supply is 61. Half of that is in drones. Basically, he's, he's got a few investors around dropping infested Terrans. That's, that's all he's got left. Thor's been playing so patiently, though. And like I was saying, maybe almost too patiently at this point. <laughs> now he's, well, he's now, carefully now running now his he's Marines killing in. Tech buildings. Infestation pit goes down. Greater Spire is going to go down. Yeah, he's and got that two. that is going to seal it. That, that, that means that there's there's no chance of him coming there's back. There's two Broodlords in the main. They're going to take out this last Marine. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I think the ghosts are going to have their way with them. <laughs> and there's like ghosts. By which you mean snipe them, right? Yes. Um, and <laughs> there's like. <laughs> there's, I'm just, there's ghosts like killing an extractor over here. I don't know. I don't know what to, uh, I don't know what to tell you guys this game is over. <laughs> this game is long over. The Broodlords actually are. The ghosts aren't going to get to have their way with them because the Vikings were like, all right, I heard there was a Broodlord problem over here. Let me take care of that. The one, like drops the one, one Brood of is like, ha! What yeah. infested Terran? And the ghost and used snipe all, on it. <laughs> all he really did was give himself away so that Thorazane could scan and take it out. Yeah, he scanned and he used snipe on that infested Terran. That had, <laughs> yeah, he really? Used, yeah, he used snipe on it. Then he sniped the infested that had like 10 hit points left. <laughs> I mean, he's got like full energy on about 15 ghosts over here, so... Oh my goodness. Now, the only thing I can think of is... Okay, Yu-Gi-Oh! has like a second base up now that's mining a little bit. Well, alright, well, here's the thing. The only thing I can think of is this. What if Yu-Gi-Oh! is like, alright, I play way more than Thorazine does. Let me tire him out because I've got more yeah. endurance. I mean, that's definitely like that. what his plan is here. The only way that Yu Gi Oh could win this game, though, is if he borrowed about eight banelings in a very well spread area, and Thorazine just happened to have every unit he owned standing on top of the area, and then Yu Gi Oh pressed X, and Thorazine might maybe lose. I don't, I, think can't would, I don't think he would even lose. I don't think so. Point, maybe, man. though. It's possible. Right now, it's just not possible. He would, he would have to, like. He would have to. Stack up all of his units and all of his SCVs and all of his orbitals on that spot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Somehow. I don't know, Somehow. man. Well, this oh, uh, not a best of Terran harassment is uh, you know is continuing. Um, he is gonna do a little bit of damage to that orbital. There's Erlings running around, and uh, he's still you know like you said he was able to secure that hatchery. He's no longer long distance mining from that one base. He's got two hatcheries up. He's got a third hatchery that's not mining. Uh, more ghost and killing extractors got, here. He's got, uh, yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! has two bases mining. And G -G. finally, the GG as the Vikings land in his mining base. And he's got no units to defend. I mean, he's... Thorzane crushes through that game. The Swede takes out the Korean Yu-Gi-Oh! And one of the stronger Koreans playing today also. Yeah. In game one, nicely done. Nicely done. There's Yu-Gi-Oh going like, what just happened, man? He's like looking over his shoulder. He's like, what's going on? Well, Thorzane's style was just so patient. He did such a good job yeah. with it. I mean, we joked around about that game. It made it sound like Thorzane was like making fun of him. It's only because he didn't GG. Yeah. The game had been long over. Yeah, uh, exactly. But Thorzane, at, in the beginninger, beginninger, at the earlier stages of the game, at the beginner stage where like you're building depots and stuff, you don't have to micro, at the beginner stage, <laughs> Thorazine was playing very passively, very carefully and yeah. patiently. And then yeah. later he showed this multitasking was quite good. He was dropping in several different locations at once as he pushed his tanks forward. He got the Vikings out just in time. You know, it's true. Like, even from the very beginning of the game, like, he's like, I'm going to make a wall off at my ramp, even though it's Terminus. 
Like, I'm just going to be that safe and that careful and that patient, and I'm not going to move out until I can put three barracks up my choke to block anything that could possibly happen. I'm going to, like, tier my siege tanks all the way across the map and just did it slow and methodical. And, you know, I wonder if maybe... I don't know. Did, do you think Yu-Gi-Oh underestimated that patience? Because I feel like he might have, if he realized how slow he was moving, he might have been able to even take more of the map earlier. He should have had a greater spire earlier. That's really the bottom line. There's no other way to deal with that patient yeah. slow push than having Broodlords. That's a good point. And he just got the Broodlords way too late. Like he was already, the, the units were already on top of his base and he was making his first Broods and there yeah. were already Vikings out. And That's it was like, true. That's actually really true. That's what killed him was that he had that high tech too late. Yeah. He had the Neural and the, and the Broodlords Af hey, you can't break after it without he was that. under siege. So, yeah, that's, that's you're right. He should have realized, like, oh, this is a big, fat mech push. I need to get Broodlords for that. Yeah, eventually. you got to be very, very careful um, about dealing with mech. And, and Yu-Gi-Oh! was. Like, he was like, oh, I see what you're trying to do. I'm, I'm just going to avoid it. He donated a lot of Zerlings to the Zelnaga Death Trap. He did. I mean, I that one siege tank next to the watchtower probably had over a hundred kills because it, <laughs> probably, there was like man. there was one marine sitting on the watchtower and then like eight zerlings or like eighty like, zerlings go in. Free marine. They're like I want this watchtower. Then like eighteen siege tanks shoot all the zerlings. They'll blow up and die. It's like well, gotta be careful about that Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> and it's like zerlings. They must have like you know the the memory of like a goldfish. So like they see their compatriots run in and die, and they're like, oh man, let's not go over there. And they're like. Oh, look, a bird. Oh, look, a free marine. Yeah, that happened a lot. So that's one thing that didn't go as well as you would have liked. Um, I think controlling the map better and getting faster, greater spire would have been the things that we really could have improved on in that game. But he played well. He didn't play badly. It's a style that you don't normally see in Korea. It's very passive, yeah. slow push. And then later, he got him into this passive mode, and then he started doing all these drops after he cleaned up the mutas. After the mutas died, why not do drops everywhere? Yeah. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. He killed off all the mutas, and he's like, all right, well, now I've got the map. Do whatever I want. So Thorzane takes out game one, man. And, took uh, it out. Took it out. Like, he was like, can I get this to go? And they were like, yes. Like, do you want to pay extra? And he grabbed it, and he left. That's right, man. He put that in a paper bag. And went and ate it at his house. Yeah, he did. He was watching some GSL at his well, house while he was eating it. Watching some GSL at his house eating it. He didn't even <laughs> have to sit in the restaurant and eat that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Crossfire is going to be the next map. He's excited. Which is Bang like that the table. perfect. Which is like the perfect map for like a slow, steady style as well. Yeah, this is actually the better map to do this on. It's not a wide open map. It's very difficult for the Zerg to kind of avoid the push. Yeah. So let's jump into the game right now.